We're on board Fennec Flight B601, flying 150 feet above the superheated Central Sahara. This four-engine specialist aircraft is sampling the atmosphere 60 times a second, and on the ground, over 30 tonnes of working meteorological equipment has been distributed over a region larger than northwest Europe. Against all odds, the Fennec Climate Programme is operational. Well, here's the Michelin map that shows the area that we've worked in. This is an absolutely key part of the, the world's climate system. And who would have thought that in the start of the 21st century, we'd have the privilege of being the first people in to have a close look. For the most part, this is a, an enormous uh, sand sheet, several thousand kilometers across. And just to give some perspective on that, there are only um, two or three half a dozen maximum uh, number of crossings of the documented crossings of the Ergshesh region. It's an area that's utterly avoided because it's so difficult to travel um, in these dune systems. There was a story of um, some French kids who drove a car down um, 20 something years ago and they went missing. One of their cars broke down and the other ran out of fuel and it took 20 years or so to find them. The Saharan climate is special. A furnace-like hyper-arid surface causes dry thermals which reach 6,000 metres into the atmosphere, the deepest anywhere on the planet. These rising thermals create an area of low pressure called the Saharan heat low. And it's this feature that Fennec is designed to explore. The heat low envelops the vast expanse of Algeria, Mali, Niger and Mauritania while extending its influence far beyond to the Guinea coast where it draws in the cool, moist monsoon air that millions of people in West Africa depend on for their survival. In June, the thickest layer of dust anywhere on Earth spans the desert, influencing even the weather on the other side of the planet. Remarkably, almost everything we know about this unique place comes from afar. The remote probing of satellites or the calculations of climate models made by supercomputers in guarded, cold, clean rooms, absurdly separate from the Saharan cauldron. There are virtually no observations from this void itself. How do we know then that the satellites or models that we rely on to understand this key region are truthful? especially for such an extreme climate. So what we do know is that most of the models can't be correct because they all have a slightly different view of where this heat low should be. Some have a heat low that's very deep, some put very hot conditions over the area, some displace the heat low far to the east. And without the observations uh, that the Fennec program has put together, we don't have the evidence with which to confront those tools and to improve them. Making meteorological observations involves people, if only to put in place self-sufficient instruments. And the problem with the central Sahara is that it's almost entirely devoid of people. This is the heat low region, or the empty quarter of the Sahara. Um, it encompasses Mauritania, uh, northern Mali, and very large parts of, of Algeria. Riven with insurgencies and banditry, and now civil wars, it's a hostile region that few would risk their lives in. But with the specialist help of the Algerian and Mauritanian National Met Services and some protracted and careful planning, Fennec settled on two major ground sites. For the two super sites, we settled on working in Zurat, on the far western edge of the empty quarter in Mauritania, and at Borj Body Mokhtar which is a tiny settlement on the Algerian-Mali border. The super sites needed some form of infrastructure to run the array of instrumentation that we had for uh, two summers, 2011 and 2012. Fennec was always going to be a difficult project to do, 
as an example, um, we, we had to um, plan for the transfer of 30 very large uh, cans of, of gas to support the Radiosonde network, and that had to be moved across the Tanner's Roof to the open desert in the fierce uh, summer heat of the central Sahara, one of the hottest parts of, of the world. The round trip was several thousand kilometres and uh, took three weeks or so start to finish. Um, in really difficult terrain in the middle of Ergshesh, which uh, doesn't get crossed very often by vehicle or camel, um, and is empty of any towns, any roads, any infrastructure. Added to that, we had several automatic weather stations that were deployed across the, the, the really open zone of the empty quarter of this part of the Sahara. Um, that was to get a spatial sense of what was going on between those two super sites. We had to move about 30 tons of equipment into the deep desert and we had an interface with the National Met Services of North Africa and I have to say without their collaboration this project would have been impossible. What they did for us was magnificent. Installing Fenex automatic stations across the empty quarter of the Erg Shesh meant a 6,000 kilometer journey, sometimes through sandstorms that more often than not obliterated the vague and shifting trails between the dunes. Sur une température, bon, le mois de mai n'était pas très très chaud, mais c'est-à-dire vraiment des températures arrivées, c'est-à-dire jusqu'à 45 km et quelquefois nous ne pouvons même pas prendre notre déjeuner parce qu'il n'y avait pas un endroit où s'abriter, c'est-à-dire du soleil qui descendait. L'autre euh, contrainte aussi était, c'est-à-dire pour chaque station installée, on était obligé de passer la nuit près de cette station pour voir le comportement de, -dire de cette station. Est-ce qu'il va euh, le matin reprendre la charge C'est-à-dire euh, -ce la batterie va se charger le matin et tout ça. Donc on était obligé de passer la nuit et de s'assurer, c'est-à-dire avec euh, le téléphone. Euh, par satellite, tout le rien, on était obligé de prendre contact avec l'IS pour dire que si la station fonctionne, elle ne fonctionne pas et on, et on intervient si elle ne fonctionne pas. Although the two super sites and the nine automatic stations spread across the desert provided Fennec with essential data, to really observe the mysteries of the Saharan heat low, something much more flexible was called for, something that could bring the instruments to the weather instead of waiting for the weather to come to the instruments. Fennec was blessed with two aircraft, the BAE-146 capable of flying low over the desert surface and the fast and high French Falcon F-20, a perfect combination. Claire Ryder knows both planes well. The French Falcon flies typically quite high in the atmosphere and quite fast. So they would cover a lot more ground than we would. Um, and they would focus more on remote sensing of the atmosphere. So that they've got a LiDAR which they would look downwards through the atmosphere with to see clouds and dust layers. Um, and they'd also drop um, radio sons to give them a temperature and moisture profile of the atmosphere. Um, our aircraft does those things too, but we fly much more slowly and we try and measure high resolution properties of the atmosphere and also dust. If you start off near the door of the BAE 146, um, you've got several inlet, um, inlets close to the door, which as the aircraft is flying will take in um, dust particles and take them into the inside of the aircraft where we measure various properties. Going backwards a bit towards the wing, um, on each wing you've got several probes hanging down um, and typically these measure the number of dust particles in the atmosphere and how big they are um, which is one of the big uncertainties in dust um, so we call this size distribution measurements. On the top and the bottom of the aircraft we've got um, 
domes, which basically are radiometers, so they're measuring shortwave and longwave radiation. On the front of the aircraft, um, you've got sensors to measure temperature and wind speed and also turbulence. If you go inside the BA-146, in the front have the cockpit and we've got the two pilots and all their controls, um, but also have an extra jump seat in the middle, which is where the first mission scientist sits. So they can easily communicate with the pilots and they can also communicate to the back of the aircraft through the intercom. In our aircraft, all the seats are ripped out and they're replaced with racks which have instruments on. Um, so the aircraft seats about 22 people. With 200 hours of flying time, the quality of the data rested only on the skill of the pilots and the ability of the scientists to find and measure that weather. A key reason for the Fennec project is that weather forecasts and satellites can't be trusted for the Sahara. So flight planning based necessarily on these sources of information was a tough challenge. Nobody wanted to return from a £30,000 flight, having taken the millions of pounds of airborne instrumentation to the wrong place at the wrong time. Quite often um, we'd end up making last minute decisions, which the pilots don't particularly like, as you can imagine. But they were quite flexible with us because the forecasting was so difficult. Um, so if they would have a, a 9 o'clock in the morning takeoff, we'd be getting up at 4am or 5am to look at the latest satellite data coming in and see if it was still what we wanted to do for the flight. Flying solo was really exciting because um, you know you're very close to the ground. You see some amazing features from the air. Um, you know dunes, um, dried up desert, um, scrub, people sometimes, and camels. Um, but also the uh, the altitude of the ground is very variable, and the pilots are actually reacting to this as they see it, and as their their radar on the aircraft tells them how high the ground is. So they're sort of pulling up over sand dunes and then lowering the aircraft back down to try and get us the science we want, so it's really quite exciting. The reward of working in a region known to be vital but long neglected because of its sheer physical hostility comes in the joy of discovery. Fennec was the first programme to fly into a major Saharan sandstorm. It was the first programme to fly into a sandstorm that wasn't even visible on satellite images. We measured particle sizes of dust that were orders of magnitude larger than we thought plausible. And we were the first to fly into the heat low region and to measure the heat fluxes that maintain that all important structure. But in many ways, the Fennec journey is just starting. Now that we have this precious data, we can confront those important models and we can sharpen the tools behind prediction and understand what those models are missing and what they're doing right.
bolo la dia te bolo tigi la dia do ah, patu.